So in this discussion, we want to kind of give you an overview of how MOSFETs are working. And trying to really do this in a case where I do this in really one, one slide and one picture that kind of paints an entire conversation. Now I could go into a long, I could go into a discussion of each of one of these for you. But I'm going to go into each, this kind of going to paint the overall picture so you can kind of see how all this stuff comes together. Now, if you look at the bottom, the middle here, right as we start, and that's kind of the center of this, remember that this is basically just a cross-section of a MOSFET where I have the source, the drain, the gate on the top, there's an insulator in between here, uh, classically silicon dioxide, but in more cutting edge fats, they typically tend to be other materials, hafnium oxide and so forth. I will have a depletion rate layers due to the N plus regions to the, to the substrate, and there's going to be some depletion layer potentially getting created in what we call the channel region. Now, the question we're going to ask is, okay, well, can I get a little more definition here? And when you look at a structure like this, there's usually two area, two dimensions. We, now, this is a 2D plot. Third dimension is relatively uniform. Well, there's some interesting things there. So it's basically going to be asking what happens vertically. Okay, this is going to be going from gate through the insulator, through this depletion region to the substrate. And then on the other side, going from the source in, right at the edge of the boundary um, with the silicon, and say silicon dioxide is our insulator just for to choose something, all the way through to the edge of the drain. We're going to look at both these regions. Now, the region from gate down to substrate is basically is what we call a capacitor, but it's a MOSFET type device. It's a medical metal oxide semiconductor device. And so as a result, this is really called a MOS capacitor, and we kind of would draw on this down below here. And you'll see more conversation of this as you're interested. But you start off with a gate voltage here, grounded the substrate again for what we'd expect for an NFET device. This would be P-doped. And the question is, from this gate voltage, not, you know, one is how does this all look all the way up and down, and two, what happens to what we define as the surface potential, which sits right at this boundary of the silicon, silicon dioxide layer, again, assuming the insulator is silicon dioxide, what is that potential right on the silicon side? And if you look at this for a moment, it almost looks like I've got a, a capacitor here up to that point, right? almost a perfect linear capacitor of uh, a good insulator and charge on both sides. And then from this point backwards, I have what would you would imagine is a typical depletion capacitance caused by a depletion layer like a, like a PN junction. And so you can think about this from a modeling standpoint, it really looks like two capacitors in series. And I'm looking at really a capacitive voltage divider. And in fact, this is exactly what you see physically, and actually that description works. And we define a term kappa, um, Greek, Greek letter kappa, is the change in the surface potential over the change in the gate voltage, as basically this capacitive voltage divider of oxide over depletion capacitance. And this is true subthreshold, above threshold. Um, anything depending on how you know those terms. And so what, what you can say is, oh, okay, there's a bunch of things I can do, you know, a bunch of different ways I can look at this. Um, it turns out in subthreshold that this is relatively constant and above threshold. It also is constant but has a different meaning, a little bit different meaning to it. Probably the best way to describe it is if you were to take a look at this and say, what's the charge of that surface? It still turns out to be exponential because, again, we're still talking about barriers and ener energy barriers. But if I were to say, what is the surface potential, that psi versus gate voltage for a MOS capacitor, what I'm going to see for a, quite a range of gate voltages, it's going to almost look linear. And that slope is going to be kappa. And it's going to be nearly a constant kappa. And then I'm going to get to a point where, because of the way the band, band bands are bending, that I'm going to see something different. And so as a result, it's going to flatten out and almost be an exponential function of the gate voltage. And so these are two regions, one of which we will call below the threshold or subthreshold, and one is above threshold. Now these two characteristics have an important effect on the carriers and the current, because in this region, the charge actually directly affects the field lines and the behavior. In this region, it basically does not. It has a very minimal effect. And so then when we take this vertical view and then look at it for the hor look at it horizontally, what you see is a different perspective. As you say, well, I could have two different cases. One where, which is subthreshold, where the channel potential is relatively flat because not, nothing is changing. Okay. And there will be, this is basically going to be defined as a current below a threshold current. And then in this particular region, which is quite interesting, 
this subthreshold region, because this region is relatively flat, I now actually take this two-dimensional problem and it becomes two one-dimensional problems. The vertical problem is basically just the MOS capacitor, which we've already solved for, and it's a great capacitor divider. And the, the problem from source to drain can just be looked at as an energy barrier from those potentials. And from source to drain, I could see something that looks very much like this band picture here, going from source to the surface potential, which is now being, you know, has, has a related value to the gate voltage, close to one, but a little less than one, but requiring no current. So it's still zero current going into the gate and yet and then a drain potential and the source and the drain are directly connected on the surface potential directly connected to the Fermi level because of their high doping and so we really want to always talk about this being the fundamental case for a MOSFET now if I go above threshold now what's going to happen is that the, the channel is going to change as a result of the amount of charge put on there and so where this would have been my subthreshold band above threshold I may start to see because of the amount of charge I have to integrate over it and I will actually see a change of potential as I go down. So now I'll have a different behavior here. Here you might imagine if it's flat, it's mostly diffusion current. Here it's mostly drift current. And we, be, and we proceed from there. And by changing the amount of gate voltage, I can change it. It'll still have a region where it might fall off and look, have the same behavior as the subthreshold case until I push it far enough in which it won't. And we'll be able to analyze all of these cases, but it's important to keep in mind that this is the fundamental place of how you do any analysis for MOSFETs and the basic physics that underlie it. So at some point you often get to a point of, yeah, I know a number of equations, but what's really important is then to understand where they came from. And so that's where this is going to, so this is where we're going to begin and then you can continue a lot of different places from here.